The team has had an awful time in practice with blown motors, but qualified well up on the grid. This is the parade lap for heat one of the first race, with the drivers warming up the tires. Joe Winkelhock from Germany was third in the FIA Touring Car World Cup at Donington, and shares a BMW Enviro car with South African champion Sean van der Linde. Mike Briggs leads the field, followed by Radisich and the Sassel Ford Mondeo, one of two models racing in South Africa for the first time. Also new to us is the Alfa Romeo 155T, being driven by George Fouché and Hilton Cowie. Uh, watch everybody have fun, they uh, they get in the tangle or two and try and slip past, or maybe a bit of rain would help us. If, you know, the car was fairly good in the wet, and that equalizes things, so... It's, uh, I'm wishing for rain. The red and yellow oil flag is out as the cars form up on the grid. The Duncan Foss Nissan expired as the cars set off on the warm-up lap, and the oil flag is out as cars peel away and take up their grid positions. That's Joe Winkelhock taking the first stint in the BMW Enviro car he is sharing with Sean van der Linde. Watch for the red lights, and within seven seconds, the green light. Starter John Wheeler didn't waste any time getting them underway, and Anthony Taylor has made a great start from the middle of the grid. Tiffany Dell was also quick off the line and is past both Radisich and Mike White, and the Nissan is up into second behind South African Mike Briggs in the Opel Astra. Briggs leads from Nidell, White, Radisich, and Taylor, and Winkelhock looks as though he missed a gear, and Nick Deval is up to sixth in the second Nissan. Winkelhock has a quick look in the mirrors, and that is Will Hoy in the Castrol Camry going past Winkelhock, and the BMW has lost two places. Into Goodyear corner for the first time, and Mike White is challenging Nidell on the inside. White has forced the Camry past the Nissan, and South Africans are one and two, and Nidell has spun out. Nidell has spun the Nissan, and there is a suspicion that he was given a nudge by Paul Radisich in the Sassel Ford Mondeo. It looked as though Nidell was tapped by the Mondeo. Let's have a look at the replay from the Nissan race cam. The Minolta Camry comes through on the inside, and there was definitely no contact between Nidell and White. That was bad luck for Nidell as the cars come streaming down the hill into the flat-out in sixth Haveline sweep, and Mike White looks to be in trouble. The Minolta Toyota Camry is slowing right down, and White has a problem. Through the AA Super Bowl, and the rest of the field is storming past Mike White. Coming up to the end of lap one, and Briggs now leads Radisich in the Ford Mondeo. Nick Deval is third in the Nissan Sentra, Anthony Taylor fourth in the Motorplan BMW, but the youngster from Krugersdorf is under tremendous pressure from Joe Winkelhock and Dion Joubert in the factory BMW Enviro cars. Taylor was sideways coming out of the tight Gastetna left-hander, and a tremendous battle is developing between the three BMWs. Race cam action from the Winkelhock BMW Enviro car as the experienced German chases after the young lion from Krugersdorf. Up the hill towards Nashua Corner, and not today, says Taylor, as he closes the door on Winkelhock and holds on to fourth place. This is a great start for Taylor. And in the pits, the Mike White Minolta Toyota Camry. Mike White, first lap incident, what, we, what went wrong? Well, we were lying well. I got past uh, Tip Nadal into clubhouse, and uh, up towards Leerkop I was getting away from Radish and I was closing on Briggs and then the fuel pressure went so the engine cut out and I just was going back to the pits but everybody just came up on me and they gave me nowhere to go and they forced me off at the chicane this is the battle for fourth, fifth, and sixth, and Winkelhock is making another move on Taylor at Goodyear Corner. Winkelhock is up on the inside of the South African and is through to fourth. Winkelhock has run wide coming out of the corner. Oh, and Taylor has to take evasive action and is fighting back. Tremendous skills from Taylor as they go through the Rothmans S's and Taylor is back to fourth. Joe Winkelhock is a former British touring car champion and was third in the World Cup at Donington, but Anthony Taylor is giving the German a real run for his money. They are onto the tabletop at West Bank Corner, and Taylor has forced Winkelhock to take the wider line and is holding on to fourth as they set off down the Caltex mine shaft. Briggs is chased into the AA Super Bowl by Radisich, who is closing in on the Opal. Duval is still third, but the big battle is going on behind them between the three BMWs. Winkelhock is trying again on the inside of Anthony Taylor, and the Motorplan BMW was spun. There may have been contact as the three cars came out of the AA Super Bowl, and that is tragedy for Anthony Taylor.
Taylor is going again, but the two BMW Enviro cars are now up to fourth and fifth, with Anthony Reid moving into sixth in the PG Autoglass Opel Astra. And into the pits comes the Marco de Santos Ian Carl Lakefield BMW. And de Santos has made contact with something out of the circuit. Pit crew are swarming all over the front of the car. The damage doesn't look too serious, but it's costing de Santos valuable time. Back to the action, and world champion Paul Radisich is closing the gap on race leader Mike Briggs in the Opel Astra. The Sassel Ford Mondeo is getting closer with Duval still third. Joe Winkelhock is followed by Dion Joubert, and behind the two BMWs, we have Kelvin Burt in the second Ford Mondeo. Next up are Will Hoy in the Castrol Toyota Camry and George Fouché in the FTP Alfa Romeo 155T. It hasn't been an easy week for Fouché, uh, but the Alfa is still running strongly. Now matters are getting interesting. The gap between leader Mike Briggs and Paul Radisich is down to less than a second. The world champion is starting to pile on the pressure. Radisich was all over the curb at the AA King, but the Sassel Ford Mondeo is closing, and Briggs locked up the brakes a little like a step in the corner. It looks as though we could have a desperately close finish on our hands, and into the pits comes Nick Duval in the BP Nissan Sentra, and that looks terminal. And Nick Duval. Early disappointment. Yeah, we had an excellent start from seventh. After one lap, we were lying third and we were catching the uh, Mondeo. But uh, the same problem stuck its neck out again and the uh, engine went, unfortunately. The penultimate lap of Mike Briggs leads Paul Radisich down the Caltex mineshaft and into the Haviline sweep. That's Marco de Santos behind the Sassel for Mondeo, but he is a lap or two down on the leaders. And Radisich is in trouble. Dos Santos has swept past the Mondeo and the world champion is pulling off the circuit. High drama as world champion Paul Radisich and the Sassel for Mondeo go out of the race. And Mike Briggs surely has this one in the bag for Opal Racing. The two BMW Enviro cars of Joe Winkelhock and Dion Joubert move into second and third. But they are a long way behind Briggs. And there is the Mondeo parked on the side of the circuit. Race cam action from the Joe Winkelhock BMW Enviro car on the last lap of heat one of the first race in the AA Fleet Care International Touring Car Challenge. Winkelhock steams past Marco de Santos in the Lakefield car. The German is looking very relaxed in second place. He knows he won't be able to catch race leader Mike Briggs. And there is race leader Mike Briggs in the Opal Racing Astra. Briggs put the Astra on pole position and has led from the flag. Winkelhock and Joubert are second and third with Anthony Reid fourth in the PG Autoglass Astra. Reid is followed by Kelvin Burt in the second Ford Bondeo. Next up are Serge Damso in the Castrol Camry and George Fouché in the Alfa Romeo as Winkelhock and Joubert go through Goodyear Corner for the last time. Race cam action from the Fouché Alfa Romeo and a little argy-bargy with Will Hoy and the Castrol Toyota Camry at Goodyear Corner. There was solid contact between the Alfa and the Toyota, but Fouché is pressing on regardless. This is the last lap and the two BMW Enviro cars are in West Bank Corner for the last time. Anthony Reid is fourth in the PG Autoglass Astra and it will be interesting to know if there aren't any team orders in the BMW camp. Dion Joubert is right with Joe Winkelhock but doesn't appear to be putting any pressure on the German. More race cam action from the Winkelhock car and once again the German is looking remarkably cool and calm about it all. It's all over bar the shouting for Mike Briggs and the Opel Astra. Briggs is into Gastetna corner for the last time and will take the chequered flag. A tremendous win for the young South African as out comes the flag and there'll be pandemonium in the Opel pits. So, Mike Briggs strikes a blow for South Africa by taking the first heat. Joe Winkelhock and Dion Joubert give the BMW Enviro car team second and third place. Anthony Reid is fourth in the PG Autoglass Astra, with Kelvin Burt fifth in the Sassel Ford Mondeo. Michael Briggs, brilliant performance. Oh, it's absolutely wonderful, you know. I've been racing for so many years, and I've never really been able to go out in international competition and show that, uh, you know, I really can do it. There's nothing wrong with South African drivers. There's nothing wrong with the South African cars. We, we truly are competitive, and I really, I'm, I really feel good that I could do it. I'm proud today. I'm proud to be South African. With only a 10-minute break between heats one and two of the AA Fleet Care Challenge, there was some frantic activity in pit lane. For teams like Toyota, there was a fair amount of work involved in getting the Castrol Camry back into action. 
And as Krobler taking over from Tiff Nidell in the Nissan Sentra was his normal cheerful self, and the lucky teams only had to worry about driver and tyre changes. For the drivers who did duty in Heat 1, there were mixed feelings. Good second, driver, uh, second place, must be very happy. Yeah, of course. Uh, but I was also confident after the practice. And, uh, okay, eight laps, it's a very short race. So you have to fight from the first to the last lap very, very hard. And uh, I must say, I'm really satisfied with the second position. Full red decision, big disappointment. Yeah, I mean, uh, the way it looks like it's, uh, it's done an engine, which is very unusual, but uh, we're just checking it out now. But I doubt we'll make the next one, but if we could change an engine in between the two sessions, we may make it for the, uh, the next two legs. You, you were in second place, Jason, Michael? Yeah, and no, everything was fine. I got a, couldn't get it off the line. The, the engine just bogs very, very badly and uh, dropped back to fourth and then come through to second, caught him up, and uh, I thought I'd do my last, last lap manoeuvre, but uh, never got that far. The warm-up lap for Heat 2 of Race 1 in the AA Fleet Care International Touring Car Challenge, and we already have drama. John Cleland took over the Opal Racing Astra from first heat winner Mike Briggs, and with the rest of the cars on the grid, is coasting into the pits with what looks like to be a blown engine. Just look at the frustration from Mike Briggs. John, unfortunately, didn't even make it to the line. <laughs> Just can't believe it. It wasn't Keenan starting up. Uh, it, it wouldn't start as cleanly as, as normal. And when it did start, there was some smoke coming from under the bonnet. As I drove out the pit lane, when I looked in the mirror, there was a heap of smoke coming out of it. It, it just didn't sound quite right. Um, and as I come down into um, the bowl, bang. Terrible luck there for the Opal Racing team, but the rest of the field is ready to go for Heat 2. The lights are green as we go to race cam action with James Weaver in the Motorplan BMW, and he has made a demon start. Weaver stormed past Serge Damso in the Castrol Camry and Ben Morganrood in the Sassel Ford Mondeo. Weaver has taken over from Anthony Taylor for Heat 2 and is up into fourth place behind Grant McCleary in the PG Autoglass Opal Astra and the two BMW Enviro cars. McCleary has taken over the Opal Astra from Anthony Reid and has Sean van der Linde and Alex Bergstaller on his kills in the Enviro cars. Van der Linde is the South African champion and has taken over from Joe Winkelhock with Bergstaller replacing Dion Schubert. Weaver is coming under attack from Hannes Krobler in the Nissan Centre, but it's still Grant McCleary out in front as they approach Goodyear Corner for the first time. Race cam action from the van der Linde BMW Enviro car. Van der Linde is the new national champion and represented South Africa in the FIA Touring Car World Cup at Donington Park. His race ended in a huge start line mix-up and Van der Linde would love to make amends here as he chases after race leader Grant McCleary in the PG Autoglass Opal Astra. Hannes Krobler in the BP Nissan Centre is having a rare old tussle with James Weaver in the Motorplan BMW. Chasing after the pair are Serge Damso and Hilton Cowie who has taken over the Alfa Romeo from George Fouché. The leaders are storming through the Havilene sweep into the AA Super Bowl and still it's Grant McCleary out in front in the PG Autoglass Opal Astra. He has Sean van der Linde and Alex Bergstaller tucked in behind him. Hannes Krobler has got ahead of James Weaver to move up into fourth place in the Nissan. Serge Damso is fifth in the Castrol Toyota Camry with Hilton Cowie sixth and going well in the Alfa Romeo. The end of lap one with race cam action from the James Weaver Motorplan BMW down the Gastetna Strait at well over 200 kilometers an hour. The race leaders look as though they're pulling away a little from the BMW and back in the pits, the Opal technicians are hard at work with an engine change on the Opal Racing Astra. The Farouk Dangor, Jeff Allen, Speedy Car Sales, Vauxhall Cavalier is also being wheeled into the pits. Farouk Dangor, early disappointment for you. Yeah, we had, uh, the first heat wasn't too bad. We just tried to keep it going at a consistent rate there. And uh, Jeff went out in the second heat, and I think the second lap, the lower control arm snapped off. Back to the action on lap four, and Grant McCleary still leads the two Enviro cars and the Krobler Nissan, but the PG Autoglass car has been penalized 30 seconds for jumping the start, and that is a setback for McCleary and teammate Anthony Reid. That'll drop the pair down the race order, but right now McCleary is under attack from Sean van der Linde, Alex Bergstaller, and Hannes Krobler. 
race cam action from the Thunderlinda BMW and he is attacking down the inside of Gestetner Corner. Thunderlinda has got ahead of McCleary. The BMW and the Opal went wide and Alex Bergstaller is also trying to get through on the inside. Krobler is right with them and they are line abreast down the Gestetner Strait. Thunderlinda and McCleary lost a little momentum when they went onto the dirt at Gestetner and Bergstaller is into the lead at the total curves and Hannes Krobler has nipped into second place. Grant McCleary went from first to fourth in one fell swoop and the game is on. Alex Bergsteller in the BMW Enviro car leads Hannes Krobler with Sean van der Linde third. Grant McCleary is fourth and in the pits, Basil Kutzer is talking to Tiff Nidell who took the first stint in the BP Nissan Sentra. Tiff Nidell, a difficult first race. Yeah, just avoiding after all the week's work of getting the car going competitively and uh, I mean a brilliant start, got to second. Mike White made a very honest overtaking manoeuvre into the clubhouse in that first lap. Then Paul Radisic, a man who is world champion and should really know better, just thumped me up the backside and spun me out, you know, when we're on the, we're on the straight after the corner. Uh, looking forward to the next one? Only if I can find Paul Radisic and return the favour. The final lap, and Alex Bergstaller still leads in the BMW Enviro car. Sean van der Linde in the other Enviro car is still second, with Hannes Robler third after a storming drive in the Nissan Sentra. Bergstaller and teammate Dion Joubert are on their way to victory in the first race in the AA Fleet Care International Touring Car Challenge, and again, one wonders about BMW team orders. Van der Linde looks content to secure second place overall for himself and teammate Joe Winkelhock and isn't putting any pressure on Bergsteller. The final corner and the two Enviro cars will take the chequered flag to give BMW a 1-2 triumph. Bergsteller's win in Heat 2 gives the German and Dion Joubert the overall win in Race 1, followed by Van der Linde and Winkelhock in a BMW triumph. Krobler and Nidel will join them on the podium with Serge Damso and Will Hoy fourth and James Weaver, Anthony Taylor, fifth. It smiles all round up on the podium with the traditional bubbly as we join British commentator Brian Jones in the post-race interview room. Dion, you laid a very good foundation for uh, victory in uh, that race. How was it for you? Well, the first race was very good. Um, I must say it was an indication following uh, Jochen Winkelhock through the field. Um, I would not have believed that from eighth we could have won. And, uh, I think it's a tribute to our car's reliability and speed that we actually came through. Um, I'm also very pleased with my teammate Alex. I mean, I think he drives splendidly. Uh, thank you. The organizers extended the break between races one and two to allow the Opel and Ford teams to complete engine changes. With intermittent rain showers, the delay posed something of a dilemma for teams. You know, I'm in the, at the back of the grid anyway, so in my case, I don't really care whether it's wet or dry. Maybe the wet might even help me. I'm in at the deep end anyway, so uh, I'll just have to make, with, make up it what I can. Uh, I think also that in uh, Europe uh, we had the opportunity to test uh, with the car in the rain condition a little bit more than here in South Africa. So probably the weather will, uh, will help us a little bit. The grid for heat one of the second race in the AA Fleet Care International Touring Car Challenge, with the two BMW Enviro cars ahead of Ivan Capelli, who has replaced Hannes Krobler in the BP Nissan Sentra. The second Sassel Ford Mondeo, driven by Sarol van der Merwe, is back in action, along with the Briggs Cleland Opel Astra, and we are underway, with Alex Bergstahl off the line ahead of Sean van der Linde. James Weaver has made another good start in the motor plan BMW and is up into third. Into the total curves, and the Capelli Nissan is in trouble. There are cars flying off the circuit all over the place. Capelli, Anthony Reed, Marcos de Santos, and Serge Damso were all involved in that little mix up. There is the Damso Castrol Toyota Camry, and his race is over. Race cam replay action is from the Damso Camry as they sweep into the left-hander at total. It looks as though Capelli gets a nudge from the Fouché Alfa Romeo and that sets off a chain reaction and Damso has nowhere to go. An unfortunate start to the race, but Alex Bergstaller and Sean van der Linde were unaffected by all the drama behind them and lead in the BMW Enviro cars. They are followed by James Weaver. Fouché is up to fourth, followed by the Ford Bondeos and Mike Briggs as they storm past one of the Class B cars at Goodyear Corner. Into the Rothmans S's and the Farouk Dangor Vauxhall Cavalier is also carrying battle scars as we pick up race cam action from James Weaver in third place in the Motorplan BMW. Let's have a slow motion look at the mix-up at the total curves with the whole incident sparked off by contact between Fouché and Capelli. 
The Damso Camry also gets a nudge from Anthony Reid in the PG Autoglass Opel Astra, and Ian Kahn in the Lakefield BMW is hit by the Toyota's front bumper as it's ripped off the Camry. Back to the action, and Sean van der Linde is challenging Alex Bergstaller for the lead at the AA Super Bowl. The South African has sneaked through on the inside, and that's a clean and precise overtaking manoeuvre. And van der Linde leads heat one of the second race in the AA Fleet Care International Touring Car Challenge. BMWs are first, second, and third, with James Weaver behind the two BMW Enviro cars. Van der Linde and Bergsteller come streaming past the pits with Weaver in tow. Fouché is still fourth, but has Mike Briggs closing in on him in the Opel Astra. And that looks to be the end of the race for Anthony Reid in the PG Autoglass car, probably as a result of the first lap tangle. This is the start of lap seven for James Weaver, Fouché and Briggs, who is edging closer to George Fouché in the Alfa Romeo. Briggs has put some space between himself and the two Ford Mondeos, driven by Ben Morgan Rood and Sarah van der Merber. Weaver has driven an impressive race in the Motorplan BMW as he leads the Alfa and the Opel into Nashua Corner. This is perhaps the trickiest corner at AA Kyle Army, and Fouché has run wide, and Briggs is even closer to the Alfa as they head for the Goodyear sweep. Briggs is up alongside the Alpha and is trying to go around on the outside of the Goodyear sweep. That is a brave move and the cars are almost touching as they exit the sweep at around 160 kilometers an hour. Briggs will try on the inside of Goodyear corner, but Fouché is closing the door on him. This is great stuff between two world-class drivers and Fouché has managed to hold off the Opel as they go through the Rothmans S's. Now, what have Fouché and Briggs got in store as they head up the Rothmans Hill towards West Bank? The crowd is loving it as Fouché takes a blocking line. Fouché is going to make it as difficult as he can for Briggs to get past. Down the Caltex mine shaft, and this is the fastest part of the circuit, with the two cars locked together at around 220 kilometers an hour. There's no doubt Briggs will try and get past the Alpha at the AA Super Bowl. Under braking, Fouché has taken the tighter line into the A Super Bowl, but the Alpha has run wide on the exit to the corner, and that is the mistake Briggs was waiting for. The final lap, and the leaders are up at West Bank Corner with South African champion Sean van der Linde still out in front of Alex Bergsteller. The two BMW Enviro cars have a handy lead over James Weaver in the Motorplan BMW. Briggs is up into fourth, but no one will catch van der Linde and Bergsteller. Van der Linde has eked out the lead of five or six car lengths over Bergsteller. There are just two corners left in this race, and all Van der Linde has to do is keep the BMW on the circuit. Both drivers clip the curbs through the new AA kink, and it's all over bar the shouting for Sean Van der Linde. Van der Linde is through to step the corner for the last time and will take the chequered flag ahead of Alex Bergsteller. The two BMW Enviro cars lead home James Weaver in the Motorplan BMW and Mike Briggs in the Opel Astra. Fouché has gone missing and Ben Morgenrude is fifth in the Sassel Ford Mondeo. Sean van der Linde will be happy with that result as he brings the BMW into the pits. Van der Linde's highly experienced teammate Joe Winkelhock will take over the BMW from the young South African with the Envirocar team in a powerful position for Heat 2. I didn't make a particularly good start. I was lying behind Alex for a second, but I, I could see I was quicker than him and I knew if I just hang in there I could make a move later on in the race. Um, he made a mistake going up to, to West Bank though and I thought Am I going to pass you now or leave it for later? And I left it. And I passed him the following lap down the mine shop to getting to Continental on the inside. The clean move we didn't touch, so uh, I'm happy. Once again, there was a 10 minute break between heats with Ben Morgan Rood and Mike Briggs happy with their stints behind the wheel. I had a poor start and the rest of the field got away. But uh, I enjoyed it. I had a good dice with, uh, with Michael Briggs for a while. And then with title, a lot of fun. Actually, I had more fun in that race than I had in the first one winning because uh, when I was winning, I had to concentrate really hard. This was just a flat-out charge. Uh, sure, I feel good. 
I think it could have been better in the first lap. I uh, got involved in a little bit of a shunt in the first corner and I had to come to a dead stop. So I lost a lot of ground on the leaders. Otherwise, I don't know, we might have even challenged for the lead. All set for the final race of the AA Fleet Care International Touring Car Challenge. This is heat two of the second race with the field waiting for the green lights. Anthony Taylor is looking for a way past the BMW Enviro cars. There's plenty of jockeying for position as we go to race cam with Joachim Wittgelhock. And Anthony Taylor is through on the inside of the total curves to move into the lead. And out of the pit lane come Tiffany Dell in the BP Nissan Sentra, Hilton Cowie in the Alfa Romeo, and Will Hoy in a slightly battered Castrol Toyota Camry. They have ground to make up as Anthony Taylor leads the field through Nashua Corner. Anthony Taylor leads from Binkelhock, John Cleland in the Opel Astra, and Dion Joubert in the second Enviro car. Race cam action is from the Winkelhock car as they go round the Goodyear sweep. This is the approach to Goodyear corner, and Winkelhock is attacking Taylor down the inside. Winkelhock is through, and the German leads from Taylor as they head towards the Rothmans S's. A little wave of acknowledgement from Winkelhock as Taylor politely moved over. Oh, and there was some argy-bargy at the entrance of the Rothmans S's, and that looked as though there was contact between the Ford Mondeo and Cleland of the Opel, with Dion Joubert forced onto the dirt in the second BMW Enviro car. Radisich is trying to find a way around Cleland at West Bank. Cleland has Radisich and Joubert right on his tail. Race cam action from the Taylor Motor Plan BMW. This is the Caltex mineshaft with the Havoline sweep taken flat out in sixth. Then it's heavy onto the brakes for the right-hander at the AA Super Bowl. And world champion Paul Radishes is attacking Cleland down the inside of the Super Bowl. Cleland is forced wide and Dion Joubert is also past the Opel Astra. Winkelhock leads from Anthony Taylor. Paul Radishes is up to third. Dion Joubert is fourth. And John Cleland is relegated to fifth in the Opel Astra. World champion or no world champion, Dion Joubert gave Paul Radisich a little nudge in Gestetner. It was just a reminder to say, I'm right with you, Paul, as Winkelhock leads the field down the Gestetner pit straight. That's the end of the day for Will Hoy and Serge Damso in a slightly battered Castrol Toyota Camry. It hasn't been a happy day for the pair, and now Taylor is having to work for his money. Paul Radisich wants a way past the Motorplan BMW as they approach the 90-degree left-hander at Gestetner. Radisich has made it. The world touring car champion from New Zealand is up into second place in the Sassel Ford Mondeo. Now, can Radisich pull something out of the bag and catch Joe Winkelhock? Taylor is also under pressure from Dion Joubert, and the second Enviro car is through into third place. Paul Radisich is sandwiched between the two BMW Enviro cars. Joubert is trying to close the gap on the Ford and locked up the brakes at Nashua Corner. And Anthony Taylor, that's Anthony Taylor, has spun off the motor plan. BMW is stuck in the kitty litter, and that is the tragedy for young Taylor. It's the end two for John Clennam with the Opel Astra's motor blown again. This is the last corner, and Winkelhock will win, but Joubert is making a last gasp effort to get past Radisich and has given the Mondeo a good thump at the backside. Winkelhock wins, Radisich is second, with Joubert right on his tail. Race 2 victory for Winkelhock and van der Linde ahead of Radisich and van der Merwe. With first race winners Joubert and Bergstaller having to be content with third place this time around. It's all smiles on the podium and another triumph for the BMW Enviro car team. I have to say thank you to the team of course because they prepared the car very well and also to, to Sean. Because he prepared to be first in the grid for my race and so it was a very good position to, to think to win the race.